Hello guys and welcome to BizPixels YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to show you guys a little bit of um, how to uh, do some pixel art. Alright, I'll show you a couple of examples of things I'm working on currently for a game. Uh, I'll show you my little character, his name is Bits. As you see on the right hand side, this is, um, this is the animation screen. All right, so basically we can do pixel art. One thing you want to know is your resolution size. All right, your resolution size usually for uh, so just simple uh, pixel art will be like 64 by 64, 32 by 32, or 16 by 16. Things that um, usually go by twos. Um, we recommend twos a lot. For gaming, especially, is because of um, sometimes if it's you know if the, if you talk about your resolution size or things like that, um, you want something to be the power of two equal to the I mean, how about this? Uh, anything that's equivalent to two, multiple of two, because of um, of size issues. Um, right now, I'll show you what graphics gale is all about and uh, how to use it. All right, so as you see, this is my character. Um, right up here, this will be your grid. You want to activate this grid. This grid goes by pixel by pixel. So basically, each of these squares is pixels. Um, and uh, the main tool you really want to use is your pen tool. I use pen tool. Some programs use uh, pencil tool. I use pen. Um, and especially if you're using like graphics scale, the pen tool is like your main tool you're gonna use. Um, maybe, probably like other people use different uh, tools, but this is the one I personally use. All right. So right now we're gonna try to make a we're gonna make artwork for the Unity engine. Now, if people are familiar with the Unity engine, um, it asks for certain things. Not too much, <laughs> but um, so so far in graphic scale, I was currently working on um, oh, yeah, the shooting animation for my character. Um, nothing's finalized, by the way, I'm just gonna show you how it is. Um, so as you see right here, right hand panel again, animation tool, I mean your animation panel, um, you could go from slowest to fastest and you could mess with the speed of the animation just by right clicking on the screen and um, selecting the options. All right, and down here to the bottom left, as you see, these are your frames. Now, these frames, you could create these frames by simply clicking on the down arrow key, all right? The, you could add frames, you could duplicate your frame if you want to. Um, I'm just gonna show you, for example, if I duplicate frame one, you could, you come up with the properties um, window. All right, the properties window usually tells you the delay of the game. You usually do so say 60 seconds. I put it for 30 because it was just way too slow for me. <laughs> and the animation would go slow to your right hand side if it's by 60 second. If it's 60 second delay. Um, if I switch over, select the frames, all frames. It's your choice of what you want to do. Um, I suggest putting these uh, frames in transparent color for a good reason. All right. Um, so, for example, if I uh, have this character right here and I decided I wanted to make um, another frame for it, um, for the animation. So I'll go down here. I'll click on the down arrow. And then I'll click add. All right. It'll give you my options, my property options. And I want transparent color. And I want 30 seconds. 
I don't want 60 seconds. All right. As you see, nothing happens here. You, you don't know what's going on. You don't want to copy and paste your character. It's like, what, what's your point? The beauty of graphic scale is that you can use onion skin. Onion skin is basically like a overlay of your like previous uh, frames. So basically, if I click this right here on the top of the screen, this little icon, and bam, baby, you got yourself a character. <laughs> So basically, this is shown. Is showing this, all right? As you can see, you see the little outline. That's from the previous one. You see that little outline? Previous one. See that outline? Previous one. All right. So basically, you have to set this up though. I don't want to try to confuse you guys. Um, to the back frame, you could do forward frame. You could do both. But back frame is usually the main one you guys will be using, I'm assuming. Um, so uh, that's a little thing to uh, show you guys. All right. Um, let me just get out of here. Let me just delete this. So to delete your frame, you will have to hold down the left mouse button and just drag and drop into the trash box and it asks you if you select the frames will be deleted will be deleted and you say okay whatever the frame is gone all right since this is my shooting animation i'm gonna hop on in to my sprite sheet all right as you know people create sprite sheets for, for um to make things a little bit easier I actually don't need this. Why do I have these out here? Let me just delete this. Sorry about that. Uh, let's get rid of this. Bitch jump. So, um, bitch walk motion. I think I have a platform. Because uh, I have everything right here. Yeah, I have everything right there. It's to be um, platforms, geo. GAL um, and this is basically my basic sprite sheet of my character okay um, by the way this whole uh, format of my uh, workspace is 512 by 512 as you know if, if you mess with unity you go down to and you have your properties window and you have your sprite it tells you like all these random things like like uh usually they start you off with like what one ten was it ten eighty and two twenty four and five twelve and I forgot the rest but by the way I just have this at five twelve by five twelve because that is what Unity recognizes as you know the basics of their basics in terms of spriting. Um, so as you know, it's a square. All right, so we're gonna minimize this. Actually, yeah, we're gonna minimize this and go down to shooting. All right, so what I really wanna do is copy and paste onto my tile sheet. So what I'm gonna do is grab this, make a box over it, I'm gonna um, control C, which is copies it. Oh, well, we, we recognize something a little bit silly here. All right, sometimes this happens. Sometimes you don't use the box correctly. <laughs> don't use the box correctly. Anyway, just you can simply click on another tool and it comes right off. And you could just simply recollect your, um, I mean, that's <laughs> a recollect. Select your rectangular selection tool again so I'm start from the head going down all the way down here and then after that after I let go the rectangular um, the, re the rectangular box all of a sudden is lighting up and uh, what you want to do is go uh, control C this will copy your image now the good thing about that is when you do hit control C 
you're able to go d to a, another file. You zoom in and control V. Huh. I am here. Where is it at? How about this? Oh, no, it's right there. I'm blind. All right, we're going to hit control V again. There you go. The character's up there. All right. So what are we going to do? So basically, control, rectangle tool, control C, move to another uh, window, and then control V to paste. All right, this is this is the animation, the first frame, which I'm trying to line up here. How about this? Is that the opinion? Yes. What what I do is to line up because I'm I'm just like this. I'm just paranoid when things don't line up, and. Uh, that gives me a quick measurement if it's on point. Okay. So basically, these are the previous uh, animation frames from um, the other files. This is my idle. This is my walk. This is my little jump. I might change that in just to one frame, but I want to test something out real quick with that. Um, so basically we're going to continue doing that so what we're here is uh we're going to jump right back into um this is my idol what's that? let me get rid of that i right, jump right back in here i'm gonna move on to my next frame and bam baby rectangle two Control C to copy, and then we move over here. Control V to paste onto the next frame. All right, you want to make sure you line it, well, line it up. Well, this is my this is my thing. I want to line it up, so I know I have four pixels in between each character. Uh, one, two, three, four. Perfect. I know how to count. God bless me. Um, <laughs> all right, let's move on to the other one. Also, I forgot to tell you guys this, but you don't necessarily have to take away the box. I forgot to tell you that, um, that the box is consistent throughout the whole set of frames that you have. So, what I'm going to do is going to control C to copy this frame now, and then bam, baby. Got another one. All right. All right. So four pixels in between. And there you go, the other one. Huh. Something seems off, though. Am I doing something right? No, I'm doing it right. Oh, 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 oh. Because that's the, the thrust position. I got to thrust it. Woo, what did I just do? All right. Hitting all these random stuff, that's not good for tutorial. It can't be hitting random keys. I don't, I don't think anybody's, you know, I don't think any girlfriend like hitting random keys, you know what I mean? But anyway, I'm gonna jump right in here. We're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna repeat it. Four, 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 four. It just bothers the heck out of me when it's out of order. <laughs> that's something I. I actually like to keep, you know, aligned. It's my uh, work, my artwork. Okay. I wonder if it's like that down the board. Should be down the board like that. All right. So, bam. Now you can take off your grid and see what's going on. Look at that shit right there now. All right, all right, now. So basically, I have all my basic elements for my character, my mechanics, I should say, for my game, for my character. Um, for example, idle animation, you got your walk animation, you have your jump animation, and you have your shooting animation. All right. 
So uh, we're going to jump into something else as well. Um, what else do we want to do? I might show you guys a little bit. Um, some little artwork. All right. Let's go to a bits background. I'm gonna open up platform platforms uh, GAO, and I was messing around with uh, with my background to see my back my platform elements and uh, doodads or whatever they call it these days. Um, I'm just wondering. These are actually I think these image sizes are. Uh, I want to go to all frames. I want to go to resample. All right. I'm going to tell you guys about resampling. Resampling basically is like if you have something the wrong size or you're not, if you want the size to look to be a little bit bigger, the thing about this is that you can resample it without losing quality as long as smooth is off. Okay. You must take off smooth. If you don't take off smooth and you resample your artwork, it's going to look like shit basically all right so as you know this is it goes by it could go by percentages it could go by pixel pixel is very risky gonna well not everybody most people are gonna use um so this is 120 by 80 artwork as you know my character is by is 64 by 64 i obviously want my uh background element to be uh to have um a li to be a little bit bigger than my character because you know what's the point of having you know your element your uh, background elements to be the same size unless you're doing um basically uh tiled artwork um my my uh my background is not it's tiled in a way but i didn't make it like that it's a little bit different um, I can only explain it to you if I decide to show you guys how to work things in Unity. Alright, so right now, as you know, I still have one of my characters inside this virtual virtual queue and copy and paste. <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to paste my character that I originally have in my copy, my virtual copy, whatever, inside my computer and uh, paste it and show you and try to... Um, give a good estimate of how the size is compared to it so as you know actually that's not bad to be 120 by 8 one and i mean 120 by 80 um actually that's perfect so uh, it's always good to measure your character and your uh, background elements together so it's not off or cause you any more issues than it needs to be um this is what I do, just to measure out how would it probably look on Unity or uh, any other system. All right, this is my ground element, it's simple. Simple ground element. That's perfect. This is my floating ground element. These platforms float. Um, yeah. I'm probably gonna make it. I'm probably not gonna animate the the floating thing, my floating platforms. I'm probably gonna just gonna. Um... Oh, actually, that works perfectly. I'm actually probably gonna just uh, code it so it works with Unity instead of just animating one. But I don't know what the point of animating that is when you could do that stuff in uh, Unity, not necessarily uh, animating it, but uh, moving it. That's what we want to do in a move ship. <laughs> All right, this is good. It's my little sprite sheet. Got to remember to save it just in case if something crazy happens. I always have things crazy happen when I accomplish stuff. Have you ever accomplished something and something goes this wrong and like the whole <laughs> and like the, the work you've been working on for like hours or so is um all messed up <laughs> because you forgot to save. Oh man, that's the worst ever. All right, so we're gonna zoom in here. We're gonna do a little uh, pixel art. All right, so uh, got a pencil, pen tool, and then um, one thing about the pen tool is that 
what I love about graphic scale is literally when you go onto a, a section of tile, I mean section of pixel. If you go to a pixel, which which is how about if you go here with your pen, and you look on the left hand side, it shows you in a little panel that uh, where you located at by pixel. So right now, if you guys look to your left. As you can see, that it, it literally gives you like a a, mic, a, a zoomed in uh, a zoomed in feel to the art you're working on. That's what I love. I, I love that about Pixel. I mean graphics, yeah. Um, I love that about Pixel. I love that about Pixel too. Yeah. <laughs> so right now we're just gonna do uh, some fixes. Um, the thing about the pen tool is. Um, where it's located you can hit the right mouse button and you can pick up the color of where your um, of where your, your pen is kind of like a copy and paste so my pen tool right here as you can see it shows green alright that's the color that you uh, just picked alright and so what you want to do is uh, right click the mouse button and it picks up brown now all right by the way about the one thing about um it's called a color replacer <laughs> that's just a shortcut to a color replacer um one thing about um graphics you know, uh that confused the hell out of me is that i'm used i'm usually used to the eraser tool you know i'm used to having the eraser tool here here i'm gonna try to find it what's going on um no Oh, there goes the text tool. I didn't think that exists. <laughs> but, uh, um, so basically you have no eraser tool. So one thing you want to do is that you could just simply click on the, the background and you could just erase it just like that by having the white in there. All right. And bam, there you go. Um, I might show you guys some artwork later of me doing jotting down some stuff, but um, we're gonna try to figure out. Um, actually, I might just do it just now. I showed it a little bit right now, so um, let's jump into uh, another file. Uh, bits collectibles. All right. Uh, no, no items. Let's jump into actually just. Uh, do you know what I want to show you guys? Enemies. All right, this is what I've been working on. This is like my last thing I worked on. Um, as you guys see, this is my enemy. Adorable, right? No, they're really not adorable. They'll freaking eat your face off. But um, besides that, this is the animations for it. Um, it's a little cute character I came up with. Uh, inspired by any other platform game. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's figure this out. So, basically, this is this is what I did. Um, came in here and messed with it. I don't know if I should do anything extra to it. I don't know. I think it's fine the way it is. You know? And this. Alright. I love graphics go. <laughs> All right. So basically, this is one of my enemies. I think this enemy, just by looking at it, as you know, it's gonna be pretty much um. How would I say? Uh, it's not gonna be a static character, so it won't move, but it will be annoying to <laughs> to be to mess with. I mean, annoying in, in terms of it being there, you know. Um, I got some str strange ways of uh, you encountering this enemy, but I just know it's your um, your basically your uh, art is um, especially in gaming is that your character has to look well. It doesn't have to, but it's suggested that your character and basically character design as well. Your character has to look a certain way for a, a, a type of purpose. I would say um, so basically you you won't have a, you don't want a dragon shooting out flowers out his mouth 
or out his ass. <laughs> it wouldn't make sense. I mean, like, you could do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I would recommend it, but... Because that, that, it has a surprise factor, but then again, why the hell would you do that? It's just, you got cute things, and you got this, this strong, majestic-looking thing. You just got flowers coming out of his mouth. I mean, like, you, you could do it, but it would just... It won't be, you know... That you could do the hell whatever you want want to do. I mean, it's your game. <laughs> I just I just like the rule that my character has to look based upon the environment that you'll be in. All right. Um, actually, I noticed something that I don't like. What I did. All right. I made black outlines. All right. I don't like that. That's that's something that I actually want to get rid of right now. So. Basically, you're going to click on your pen tool again, right? And if you have any art or anything like that, you're probably going to be using that as well. And I'm going to try to select a, a darker color. Will that work? Oh, that's too light. I was back at 77, right? Or just... I just pick up this color again and it resets itself. And these are your basically tell you the values by numbers. Um, if you don't see gray grays, like the easiest thing all you have to do is set all these equal to each other. I believe it's equal to each other in order to maintain gray. Um, so let's go down and value. Okay, that's a little bit richer in, in red. Um, how about this? Oh, it's perfect. All right. How about we use the paint bucket? All right. I'm just gonna fill all these in using the paint tool, paint bucket tool, instead of doing it one by one. There's certain things that you can't do with the paint bucket tool, though. I just showed you example. <laughs> Because as you know, it selects things that are connected to each other in a way. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my pen tool, as you guys just seen, and I'm just gonna try roll for it. It might be an easy way to do this, but right now, I'll just do it that way. All right, so we're gonna look for a darker shade. Actually, they have a darker shade right there, don't I? There you go. Pew. And darker shade. Of the pale color. And of course, this. I'll also just make it dark because. That makes sense. Alright, so what you're going to do is you're going to do that for the rest. Of your um your frames. All right, so basically, you're gonna come down here, right click to pick up the paint, move over here, do the same thing. Now, just it's good to keep doing this because it's muscle memory. And then you start doing it without actually thinking about it. it; just comes into your mind. You're just like, oh, that's how it works. Your brain's a big muscle, <laughs> so we just repeat it. You'll remember what tools to use and things like that. All right. Then we're going to come back here. Redraw the line. Redraw the damn line, son. All right, all right, all right. By the way, you can use the same thing with the paint bucket tool. You can also pick up the color. I want you guys to get used to the, the feel of it. By the way, guys, if you want to know the stuff I'm using, um, 
This is a Satik 13 HD. I mean, it's decent for the things I'm doing, you know. Uh, people who are like big and uh, digital art world um, prefer bigger. I prefer bigger too, but um, <laughs> that's what she said. But um, this is one of the the cheapest thing on the market for um, Satiques in terms of uh, drawing tablet. Tablet, tablet screens, I should say, and uh, go in here. Oh shit! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Perfect. All right. I'm gonna teach you guys an another tool. For the last frame, since we have time here, a little time here. Um, it's it's a tool which is a pain in the butt to use sometimes, but you know sometimes it gets the work done. It's, it's a tool. It's kind of like a, a vector tool in Illustrator. If you guys are familiar with the program of Adobe Illustrator, you know what I'm talking about the pen tool. How it's like how it's meant for tracing and stuff like that so everything connects to each other using anchors but um this is this have a similar concept but um for me I don't I personally me I only use it if I wanted to like draw like make things in line or things like that but you know it's not I don't like the tool personally but I use it sometimes when I don't want to draw, like, for instance, a border around my uh, artwork. All right, all right. Oh, damn it. Shit. All right, I got it again. All right, we're gonna go pick up the other color real quick. All right, so next to it is con the Connect Nine tool. Okay, I love this tool and I hate the tool at the same time. What you want to do is for the Connect Line tool is that you could click on a on a pixel space on the grid, and then literally you could drag it anywhere. You know, um, what you want to do is uh, you want to click if you want to make a border or something like that you want to click to each edge and if you want to keep the border as you as you see that the um I'm going a little ahead of myself let me just backtrack a little bit um as you see here is that uh it's still connected no matter where you click it's leaving off these points I'll call them like vir this call them like a virtual uh anchor points you know um so in order for you to get out of this just hit the right mouse button and bam baby you just let go of your uh connected line tool um yeah that's one of the um ways you can use it i mean some people like it it's just something that i'm not used to or want to mess with because it's just what do i need it for but um, I know that a lot of illustrators or anybody like that who just does art in general might want to mess with that. Oh, hey. That's the, that's what I hate about it, too. It's like, <laughs> like randomly I forget to select the pen tool again because I'm like, all right, I'm ready in the pen tool so I don't worry about anything. And uh, when I click on it and I'm, and I'm starting to do my artwork, I just make like a big line across my artwork and I get pissed off. <laughs> Although it's not necessary, because you have the Control Z tool, which is the life of all life of <laughs> of, <laughs> of animators and uh, artists alike. <laughs> all right, so this is what I have for you guys today. Um, I'll probably probably have more videos out for you guys. Um, please like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed today's tutorial, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>